Did you know that only 1% of the entire world's population are millionaires? That sounds like a very small percentage, but that works out to about 56 million people on this planet who can claim that they belong to that elite club. And you can be a part of that with these five easy steps to make a million dollars in real estate. Stay tuned until the end of the video for some expert secrets on getting to the elusive millionaire status in record time. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate education time from months to minutes. So Subscribe not to miss what's coming. The beauty of real estate investing is that it's accessible to anyone. I truly believe anyone can become a successful real estate investor if they have enough perseverance, patience, and drive. Generational wealth can be created without having to wait a lifetime to achieve it. The new generation of investors definitely wants a shorter timeline to make their millions, which I love, so let's dive right in. Step one is to educate yourself. Knowledge is power, and the first step to accomplishing anything is to educate yourself. Conduct research about what you wanna do and how you wanna go about doing it. From there, it's critical to learn from the experiences of others. Begin by reading books, watching YouTube videos, joining education sessions, or by taking part in the various real estate investing education groups that exist. One of the most popular books that's motivated many to make the jump into real estate is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The principles of real estate investing are taught in this book. The book also goes into how to use real estate to build wealth and cash flow. Another great book more geared towards the Canadian real estate market is Don Campbell's book, Real Estate Investing in Canada. The book takes a systematic approach to analyzing markets, properties, and building your team. Beyond books and videos, I would strongly suggest learning from knowledgeable people in the industry. Find someone you look up to, someone you admire, someone who is living the life that you desire for yourself, and study their work. Success leaves clues, and if you can learn those shortcuts from others who have been there, you'll achieve your goals faster than they did. Many real estate educators run courses, do coaching sessions, or do a combination of the two. They'll also run you through real life case studies and get you started on how you can begin to build your portfolio. Some offer free training and others have large price tags. Do your research and find something that works for your budget. If you wanna learn from me, check out my masterclass at darrenvoros.com. Step two is to set goals. It's critical that you write down your objectives and exactly what you intend to achieve. This is significant for a few reasons. First and foremost, it helps you put a plan in place and work towards a tangible result. If you aim to make $200,000 this year by flipping properties and your average flip makes you $50,000 in profit, you'll need to reverse engineer your goal and you'll quickly figure out you need to complete four transactions this year to achieve your goal. I know this sounds so basic and straightforward, but you'd be surprised how many people skip this step. Second, putting down your objectives will guide every decision you make in your business. You should be asking yourself with each decision, is this getting me closer to my goal or moving me further away? If it's the latter, you need to reconsider if you wanna do it. Start with these simple questions. What do you want? Why do you want it? What will your life look like when you have it? And what dates are you committing to achieving your goals? This will help you build your plan and start working towards it. Step three is focus on one strategy. There are numerous methods to profit in real estate. You can buy and hold rental properties, flip houses, or become more of a passive investor with private lending and joint venture partnering. But don't fall into the trap of having what I call shiny object syndrome. You hear about another investor having success with a strategy and you wanna try it. Then you find out about a different method and you give that a go. This can lead to much slower growth when you're initially starting out because every time you try something new, there is such a large learning curve and you have to dedicate time to learning about each strategy. You'll also start to find economies of scale when you've repeated a process. Have you ever tried to put together a piece of Ikea furniture? You buy four new chairs for your kitchen and the first one takes you an hour to put together because you can't understand the stupid bubble figure pictures, but by the fourth chair, you're down to putting it together in less than 10 minutes. Real estate investing is exactly the same. Your first transaction will be a large learning curve and you'll be lucky to make money, but by the third or fourth, you'll have it dialed in and be profitable. Now, I know what you're thinking, which strategy is best? I'll give you the answer that everyone hates. It truly depends on you, but this is all the more reason to go back to step one and get educated because we don't know what we don't know. How do you know what will be best for you if you don't even know what's available? You have to look at a few major factors before you decide what you wanna do. How much time do you have? How much money do you have access to? And how much risk are you looking to take on? Once you know these items, you should be picking strategies that match your strengths. Step four is to start as soon as possible. Having huge goals is crucial, but you won't become a millionaire overnight. Investing in real estate 
isn't get rich quick. That's why the best real estate investing strategy is not timing the market, it's time in the market. At the same time, taking every bit of savings you have and dumping it into the market to get started as soon as possible often backfires too. Your first real estate transaction is unlikely to be the best. You're also more likely to make mistakes at this phase. So starting small is a good way to learn the ropes. Invest in less expensive and simpler properties. I wouldn't recommend starting with a massive renovation or a complicated transaction. Remember this acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. And by stupid, I mean, I love you. But seriously, find some strategies that are low risk, high reward. If you're not sure what those are, they are usually the ones that require a time commitment, but not a large financial commitment, such as wholesaling. The other strategies I like for first time investors are the burst strategy and house hacking. If you're not sure what house hacking is, check out this video right here once you're done with this video. Step five is to use leverage. Leverage is my favorite word in real estate, and it's what helps most investors achieve their financial goals faster. Faster. What is leverage? It's using other people's money, time, and resources. For instance, I see a lot of novice investors trying to pay off their mortgages quickly. Why? With interest rates at record lows, why would you want to pay off a property? So you can have security? You can have security by diversifying your portfolio, not owning two properties that are paid off. Think about this simple formula. What increases your return on investment? Either making a larger return, that goes without saying, or by having a smaller amount of money invested. The most successful investors I know are always using leverage to build and grow. I know multiple investors who have million dollar portfolios with literally none of their own money invested. What is their return on investment? Investment if they have no money invested. It's infinite. And what's better than an infinite return? Nothing. Use leverage in your portfolio and you'll see significant results in a much shorter time frame if you do things correctly. As promised, I wanted to share some extra tips to expedite your millionaire journey. First, buy investment properties with high appreciation potential. Real estate appreciation will almost always outperform any other form of return inside of real estate. For instance, the Toronto market did about 20% increase last year alone. If you owned a million dollar property, that means that on paper, you made $200,000 last year. It takes a lot of cash flowing properties to hit those kinds of numbers. Now, be careful here. I'm not not suggesting you speculate and invest solely on appreciation, but if you can find fringe areas that have potential for growth and you can buy underperforming assets, you can have significant upside if the market has a couple of good years. Second, focus on building your team. There are a lot of moving components in real estate investing. As a result, you can only do so much on your own and you can only know so much. Furthermore, you are more likely to make costly mistakes if you do not seek expert advice because you're inexperienced. You'll need to work with a number of crew real estate specialists, including realtors, mortgage agents, lawyers, accountants, property managers, property inspectors, appraisers, insurance agents, and contractors. These specialists will allow you to scale and grow at a rate that you could never achieve by trying to do it all on your own. Remember this, real estate investing has created more millionaires than any other form of investing. In fact, 90% of the world's millionaires have been created through investing in real estate. If that doesn't get you excited about investing, then I'm not sure what will. It's why I'm such a big believer in it and why I love teaching others how to create their own success. If you want to learn more about real estate, check out my masterclass at darrenvoros.com. If you have any other real estate related questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.